I see catchment management authorities as the voice of the catchment, as the keepers of the long view. So they need to know about their catchment through time and through space, and they need the people in the catchment to know that they know and to trust that they have the best information about the natural resources of the catchment and how they can best be managed in everyone's interest. I think um, regional delivery is a very strong um, premise that everybody's really pushing for. So I think that puts the CMAs in a very good position because they are good regional deliverers. My, my main message to, to CMA staff is that, um, you know, they're, they're right at the forefront of something that's very exciting in terms of this community driven NRM process. We need to do far more to be able to communicate to the outside world how we know that where we intervene in NRM by providing funding or technical or other support that, we've, that this is on sound evidence and that we, have, that we are right to pursue um, activity here as opposed to there. So what we tried to do is actually target the operational staff, um, very much the general managers, the chairs, they have their forums, the business managers have their forums, and then we tried to, tried to target the themes around the daily challenges that operational staff sort of deal with. And that's basically engaging the community using education and professional development. Uh, it's about better collaboration across CMAs and there's been good, good examples uh, of that. And the last theme was just sharing ideas of how we do things organisationally that might make things a bit easier. So the four themes, engagement, collaboration, on-ground works and better business. The real advantage of this gathering is that we've got NRM practitioners from right across New South Wales. And you know, this is the first uh, conference where this is, or forum where this has actually happened. And I think there'll be a lot of informal as well as formal learnings. And we'll actually um, go home, you know, energized and, and really inspired to, you know, to continue, continue on and do great work in the NRM field. Forget that we're 13 CMAs, we are CMA in New South Wales. And, and actually, it's, there are only pencil marks on a map, which mean nothing, right? We all have to work a little bit differently because of our different regions, that's okay, but right on top there should be CMA New South Wales underneath the 13 CMAs working their own region as they need to. But how can we work more collaboratively together? And I think it's all about communication and it's about togetherness. And I heard someone say there's a lot of love in the room. Well, I don't care how you, how you say it, but that's what we really want. Currently, um we don't really communicate uh, with our peers across different CMAs. So I don't know my other River Health um, colleagues in, in quite a number of the CMAs. Generally speaking, like we've not set up communities of practice so that we can communicate regularly on these things. So this is a really excellent uh, venue um, for, for starting to make those connections and talking about how we might actually communicate more often together. You know, that, that level of trust and, and adoption of practice is, is easier if you have someone on, from the local, from the district who's a well-regarded local who supports what you do. We haven't really got as much at, at stake, you know, if you've got a, a one or two million dollar farm, you know, that's a, that's a significant asset and if, if you're asking, you know, for an investment of, of several, you know, tens of thousands even, you know, you, you want to be in the position that you know it's, it's well regarded and well respected, and that you know that, that what you're doing is having a is well supported in the region. At the end of the day, everyone everyone's still a person. So whether you're in industry or you're on farm or you're in a school, it's still a person. So you've got to make that connection with the person. So, and that takes time. So when we've got really short-term government investment cycles, you, to come in, if you haven't got that relationship, you, you won't make the longer difference and I think what's really important is we're actually in our communities for a long time so while government policies and agendas change we're still there we've still got a commitment to our communities and so that relationship is really important and you don't want to compromise it just because of a, a change in government priority you've still got to you know you still run into them in Mitre 10 and Woolworths and you know you've got to you've got to maintain that credibility. Uh, the biggest things that continually pop up, I guess, is to communicate with people, uh, colleagues and external bodies or community members, um, and I guess to maybe try, like start, start small and, and trial things out before you spend the millions of dollars and go for the large scale projects.
It's a constant stream or common theme in having clear communication amongst all your stakeholders, across agencies and within your own CMA, opening up those those doors and knowing, you know, what's needed. It'll keep keep the process going and that's the best management activities sort of happen naturally from that. You know how to put the project out there and be concise with it. Know that you're getting the um, on-ground action that you need. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you'll, you'll get you'll get the community to go with you. Yeah. You won't have to push them you'll, or drag them. They'll just go <laughs> with you. The support of people that take on a new project is really important because you've 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 taken them along to you know to change, and then you're. You, know, you really don't cut them, cut them, don't cut them adrift, you know, that, because you know, people lapse into bad habits or they just don't feel quite confident enough to continue, and you know, they just may need some more information or, or uh, a bit more help, you know, just trying to get it over the line if they're not understanding it, some of the changes that are happening. <laughs> Events like today's forum here in Forbes are really good at a state level of helping CMAs share, but I think we need to make much better use of Web2 uh, Web tools to enable CMAs to tap into best practice from across the whole model. Some CMAs in some jurisdictions are, are lucky in that they happen to have a, a regional university in the same town and some are developing good partnerships with local research providers and with other knowledge institutions, but I think that could be improved dramatically. I don't think anyone's captured the full potential of that. Small to medium enterprises that are doing innovative things, whether it be in food or water or energy, they should be natural allies for CMAs. So I don't see enough CMAs involved in research partnerships, and I don't see enough CMAs actively thinking about how they can draw on the science and, and infiltrated into their practice and vice versa. So collaboration is about actively working with a range of different people, so people in, within CMAs, across CMAs, other agencies, people in community, Aboriginal networks. Yeah, it's about getting people together to, to work towards a common goal. There's some partnerships out there that um, people think aren't logical partnerships, you know, they, they think it's a bit of you know, water and oil type things and you think you've got a sitting around the table and you've got a green group and you've got a farming group and you might have a mining group and when you when you really delve into it it's not it's not an unholy alliance it's probably a very logical alliance in that <clears throat> they all want the same thing it's just they want to more or less take different tracks to get that same thing but most of them want to see our, our natural resources our environment managed sustainably and for future generations it's as simple as that. We're in a very much a transition time and we're moving more into, um, we're still doing our facts and figure type stuff but we're also starting to tell the story of what we're doing and we're moving more into evaluation um, and, it, and the people we report to are, are asking us to do that more too. So we're looking more at performance stories um, and matching the facts and figures with the story of what we're doing now. We're engaging with a lot of organisations and landholders and communities, um, but we need to know whether that's working, um, whether we need to change things to make it work better, um, if things are working really well, can we apply that to other areas, and just make sure that we're really we're doing best value for money out there. Any of the tables just over there have something they'd like to add? Uh, we were thinking more about the, um, the ability to collect data for to be utilised at a different range of scales within your CMA, across CMAs, across the state, um, having baseline um, places to, to kick off your works and know that it's in particular health and see how it's improved over time. Um, the landholder law is a good example of um, a way to capture that in a very user-friendly style that's appealing to landholders but also can be used across different agencies. Schools might pick it up. Council, it's not a CMA internalised um, system of operating. We picked up on really looking at opportunities to make sure that, that that information that is collected is communicated back, particularly to the volunteers who are putting in the time. Um, so there's opportunities to really make that effective to show that what they're doing is, is uh, being used and showing results. 
Uh, yeah, we've had a couple of uh, ones, I guess, about focusing on the E in the MERI strategy. I think a lot of people do their monitoring and collect their data and write the reports, but they often forget about the evaluation and being willing to go back and reassess your project logic, perhaps, and redesign your projects based on the information that you've collected. Uh, we also thought that it is really important to share uh, the information that you gain from your from doing MERI uh, with all stakeholders of the project, um, similar to what the previous table said, I suppose, um, but also across CMAs. And I think the report cards are just a really great way, a simple way to do that. I think it's a very bright future. Some people worry about what government's going to be in power. I don't come to take those lines at all because I believe what we are producing uh, is a need for the people of New South Wales and not a need for government. Yeah, government needs to do it, but we are actually producing what New South Wales community expects someone to look after the environment. We're doing it for them. We're doing it with a regional model. Well, I'd like everybody to actually know that we do support them, that we really value the staff, um, and we think that they're doing a terrific job, and we want to keep working with them in a positive way. For me, the take-home messages for CMA staff are that it's an incredibly exciting time to be a professional in natural resource management. Uh, because the demand for professional services in this field is only going to increase and it's going to broaden, as I said, across that climate, water, energy and food uh, debate. Those things are converging. We're going to need integrated approaches to deliver satisfactory outcomes. If you only look at one, uh, any of them in isolation, you'll cause perverse outcomes for the others. And so, the integrators, particularly at this landscape or regional scale, uh, are going to be in an incredibly important position. The quality of the speakers has been excellent, but also it's been practical. I guess it's like what we want to do with landholders. I found practical things that I can take home and start doing differently tomorrow. Um, and a lot more understanding of what other CMAs are doing. Um, it's all variations on a theme, Peter. But uh, there's no need to reinvent the wheel when you've got colleagues out here that have already done a lot of this stuff and the willingness to share information, it's just fantastic.